Today's the day of the Bawanana literally means invitation. Usually on the full moon day like this, we'd, the monks would be chanting the Bodhimokkha, or one of the monks would be, the others would listen. But on this day, it's, it's, it's a different ceremony. That the monks invited one another that if anybody had any suspicion that they had um, committed an offense, they'd be willing to listen, they would be willing to be charged with the offense. It's an opportunity for everybody to be open about their faults. It's a good idea that the lay people can take this as an idea as well. If you know that you have any faults, or if you suspect or you don't even know you have some faults, but other people might be able to see them, it's good to be able to listen to their criticism. Of course, when you're going to give criticism, it, you're showing a lot about yourself as well, so you have to be very careful about how you criticize other people the grounds of criticism and what you think is worthy of criticism, what's worthy of praise. But the willingness to listen to criticism, this is an important part of the practice. Because if you don't listen to criticism, then you're never going to learn. You think everything is fine. And so in order to get the mind in a position where it's willing to listen to criticism, this is one, this is one of the reasons why we meditate. Get the mind in a position where it has a sense of strength and well-being and develops this willingness to learn. So we're not here just to make an impression on other people or to make an impression on ourselves. To pretend that we don't have any mistakes. As, as long as we're not our hunts, we're still doing something wrong. So it's good to be able to have that attitude. And one of the rules for the monks is when you're being criticized is you don't show disrespect for the person who's criticizing you. Now, the person may be totally crazy and have totally off-the-wall criticisms, but you take that as an opportunity to learn as well. One, you learn about the other person, and two, you learn how to listen to your name being dragged through the mud and not get, rea get reactive. That's a good skill. So to develop that skill, you want, to want the mind to be in a good position where it's solid and secure. And this is where you do it, right here at the breath. Otherwise, if somebody criticizes you and you're not solid, you get knocked off very easily. And you end up doing all kinds of skillful things in response. So try to get, make the mind solid right here. Give a sense of well-being, just being with the breath coming in, being with the breath going out. And sometimes you won't have to wait until you see other people criticize you. You begin to see yourself that, okay, you're doing something that's wrong, something that's unskillful, something that's either harming yourself or harming other people. You see that, you learn how to let go. No matter how old the habit may be, you can change it. John Sowett's image is of the darkness. The darkness may have been there for aeons. When you shine a light, the darkness doesn't have the right to say, okay, I've been here for aeons, this is my place, the light doesn't have the right to come in. Once the light comes in, the darkness has to leave. And it's the same when you see the harm caused by your old habits. You say, I don't have to follow that anymore. There's no requirement that you have to stay in your old ways. In fact, if you had to stay in your old ways, there wouldn't be any purpose in practicing. So that's where the meditation gets really good, is you don't have to wait for other people to see your faults. You can see them first, and you can deal with them first. And that's how the mind gets cleansed. <laughs>